Gordon Brown was the one person who could have saved Britain from being sucked into the vortex of the global financial crisis. Brown was Britain's finance minister for 10 years. During that time, he was provided with all the information needed to prevent Britain's boom bust of 2008. He was provided with the evidence on how the crisis would happen, exactly when it would happen, and why it would happen. Brown took no action to avert the economic tragedy. He had 10 full years to act, but he failed. So if there is one person to blame for exposing Britain to the financial crisis that engulfed the global economy, it is the man who lives behind these gates, Gordon Brown. In 1997, with the help of D. Ream, Tony Blair became Prime Minister and Gordon Brown became Chancellor of the Exchequer. In that year, when Brown moved into his office here at the Treasury, I supplied him with a detailed account of how speculation in the world's housing markets would be a disaster. And that was years before Americans invented the subprime mortgage. By 2007, Britain and most of the other industrially advanced economies will be in the throes of frenzied activity in the land market. Land prices will be near their 18-year peak on the verge of the collapse that will presage the global depression of 2010. The two events will not be coincidental, the peak in land prices not merely signalling the looming recession, but being the primary cause of it. Dear Mr Harrison, thank you for your letter of 4th of November to the Chancellor of the Exchequer. The letter has been passed at HM Treasury for reply. The Chancellor and his advisers are always happy to receive ideas and suggestions. I cannot comment on the points in detail, but I can assure you that your points have been noted and will be carefully considered for future budgets. But Brown took no action. So on March 25, 2003, I met his closest economic advisor, former investment banker Shruti Vadera, at the Treasury. I briefed her on the economics that could head off the looming disaster. In 2005, I repeated the warning in a book with the title of the problem that he should have been heading off. No action was taken, so I went to the top. I wrote to the Prime Minister. The reply came back from Tony Blair's spin doctor, Alastair Campbell. Fred, he wrote in astonishment, why are you so pessimistic about the UK economy's future? Everybody agrees Gordon Brown is doing a grand job. Really? Under Brown's stewardship, Britain has had the biggest housing boom in its history, but when challenged, he shifts responsibility onto others. Look what happened when Andrew Marr of the BBC reminded Brown that he had promised to abolish the housing boom bust. Brown went on the offensive, accusing Marr of rewriting history. Brown said, The idea that you're going to rewrite the last ten years in that way is completely wrong. In publicly denying the facts about his promise to abolish boom busts in housing, Gordon Brown was lying. In Gordon Brown's first budget speech in 1997, he made this promise to the people of Britain. For most people, the acquisition of a house is the biggest single investment they'll make. Homeowners rightly expect the investment to be protected by sensible policies pursued by the government. I'm determined that as a country we never return to the instability speculation and negative equity that characterised the housing market in the 80s and the 90s. Volatility is damaging both to the housing market and to the economy as a whole, so stability will be central to our policy to help home owners. We must be prepared to take the action necessary to secure it. I won't allow house prices to get out of control and put at risk the sustainability of the recovery. I will not allow house prices to get out of control and put at risk the sustainability of the recovery. And I have said before, Mr Deputy Speaker, no return to boom and bust. We will not return to the old boom and bust. No return to boom and bust. The housing crash is underway and thousands of families will be made homeless because Gordon Brown refused to act. To add insult to injury, Brown is trying to avoid personal responsibility for Britain's economic catastrophe. In view of his accusation that Andrew Marr was trying to rewrite history, we need to reread Brown's budget speech on the Treasury's website. This lists all of Brown's budget speeches. But here's the strange thing. Brown's 1997 budget speech is missing. 
erased from the budget archive on the Treasury website. Gordon Brown's cover-up has begun. But what about the American banks that fueled the subprime housing crisis? We can't blame Gordon Brown for what happened on Wall Street, can we? Brown could have warned Britain's banks not to touch America's toxic mortgages with a barge pole, and the banks could have offloaded those rotten deals and not been trapped by America's credit crunch. That would have saved hundreds of billions of pounds now being used to bail out the banks. As part of his Pontius Pilate Act, Gordon Brown's hands are clean. He now says that he spent 10 years trying to get international cooperation to secure economic stability. If that were the case, he could have warned the US authorities, and Washington could have taken defensive action to protect people's homes and investments. But Brown did not issue such warnings to the Americans or to anyone else. Having taken action on the banking system, we must now take action on the global financial recession, which is likely to cause recession in America, France, Italy, Germany, Japan, and because no country can insulate itself from it, Britain too. Brown, as Prime Minister, is now throwing other people's money at a problem that he allowed to happen and is engaged in a cover-up to protect his reputation. And I have said before, Mr Deputy Speaker, no return to boom and bust. Yeah. We will not return to the old boom and bust. Yeah. No return to boom and bust. Yeah.